A few years ago, I started this channel on the basis of making Final Fantasy videos. My first biggest success was Final Fantasy XI vs. XIV, and now years later, I have over a hundred videos and still more to come. Some of my favorable videos were lores, talking about Final Fantasy XI. They were stories about the beginning of the world of Anadil, up to the beginning of Final Fantasy XI's present time. They were videos I was very proud of, but when I stopped playing XI, I stopped making the lores, so I went for a long time without making a single lore video. But now the circumstances have changed. Final Fantasy XIV has come up with amazing stories I can talk about, some of which seem a bit on the clone side from other Final Fantasies, but the stories are actually pretty interesting. Be they from dungeons, main scenarios, events, or even quests, the stories of XIV were well thought up and pretty well executed. I come here today to tell one of those stories, a story that not only was an interesting find, but a moving one at that. This story was also the reason why I started doing lures again, so it's best to say that this story is one of my favorites. If by any chance you can't read the title of this video, it's obvious the lore is about one of the more talked about stories within the community, and it's also the more peckish of the many lures of Final Fantasy XIV. Hell, maybe Final Fantasy as a whole. I am the Sink Weaver, and I will be your storyteller. This takes place in the dungeon, Tam Terra Deepcroft Hard Mode. The quest? Corpse Groom, but I would like to call it by a more appropriate name. This, my friends, is the story of Edda's Descent. Known throughout the land of Eorzea, you're now known as the hero who defeated the Garleans and brought about the new era. The threat of the Garleans, the Primals, and Ashians have been delayed and pushed back through you and your friends' efforts. So in all cases, you've helped everyone you could through your actions. Except you didn't. It's true that no one can save everyone, but what if all you had to do was be yourself to cause reprehensible damage? Think back to when you were just an adventurer, doing the jobs that no one wanted, starting down your path as the hero. Your actions could cause a few to find the courage to take on the task that would be impossible for normal people, things like taking on a dungeon that normal people could never do. The problem with that is that you as the adventurer have three factors that make you different from the rest. One, you have the Echo, which warns you of danger, peers into a subject's past, gives visions of the future, has the ability to speak and understand any language and other powers that we still have not discovered. A truly mysterious power indeed. The side effect to all this is that the owner of the Echo cannot be tempered by the primals of Eorzea, which is a pretty awesome side effect if you ask me. Two, you are the chosen hero of Helin, the Mother Crystal. As you are protected by her power, you will not truly die in battle, but instead be sent back to a point to try again. Some call this immortality, I call it cheating. And last, you're an experienced adventurer, so dungeons like these aren't really much of a challenge for you. So with that said, do you remember a little party that broke up due to their latest failure? You watch as two team members beray their healers for failing to protect their tank, something that you can actually encounter in real life when healers aren't doing their job. That tank, by the way, was her fiancé. And we're off to a good start! Apparently the party wanted fame and fortune just as you were obtaining the same. However, they did not find such luxury and lost one of their own. Through decapitation, by the way. The place they were exploring was the Tamterra Deepcroft before you even touched it. So it was riddled with cultists and demons, a perfect place to get your head chopped off. This was when you were but a lowly adventurer getting his or her name out there. But sometime later, when your name is spread across the realm, you're approached by the healer who reveals herself to be Etta, and you find out why everything happened. Avir, her fiance, looked up to you due to your heroic actions and because of that, he decided to become an adventurer and bring his fiancée for the ride. The problem was that she was a horrible healer and needed potions to survive, which was a sign of bad news in the first place, needing potions to heal instead of conjury. 
She says she would quit adventuring and go home to train her magic so it would never happen again. And at that point, I was a little worried. But at the same time, happy to find out that she'll improve herself due to her catastrophic failure. A large part of me still wanted her to quit altogether so that the pain of loss wouldn't be a normal thing for her, since she looks a little fragile. Fast forward to the next era, as the hero of Orzia, you are known widely as the one who brought about peace to the realm. So why not walk around Oda for old time's sake? I mean, you're up in Mordona all the time anyway, and don't tell me I'm wrong. You want to be close to those level 100 gear when you get your Alligan tombstones after hours of grinding, right? Well, it just so happens you meet Payu Payu. Payu, for which I will call him by, explains that he got a wedding invitation from Etta. And he also heard that his other teammate, Leovine, got an invitation as well. Now this wouldn't be a cause for alarm if it wasn't for the fact that she was getting married to a veer. Yes, the beheaded and dead Avir. Payu decided to investigate this with your help by finding Leovine, but the problem with that is that she's dead. She joined the Skions of the Seventh Dawn and was murdered along with her comrades during the raid, which brings forth more questions about this wedding invitation, so you show Payu to the grave you dug up for her, only to find the grave disturbed and the body gone. As the situation gets worse, you agree to attend the wedding with Payu and the Tam Terra Deeprof, oddly the same place where Avir himself died, and what you find is pretty horrific. First we find out that Payu had been taken hostage by Etta and it's your job as the hero to find him. The layout has changed since your last encounter, but more to that, the place was riddled with nightmares to undead experiments in an evil atmosphere that seems demonic and otherworldly. Zombies, body parts, ghosts, you name it. It was like someone was trying to rebuild a body using dark and forbidden methods. Has Hedda truly become insane? Did Avir really come back to life? And what of Leovine's body? Well, as soon as you asked that last part, there she was. Leovine and all her undead glory. Such horror to fight a former comrade. Bodies swarmed to steal your body and almost all of them looked like they were supposed to be used as spare body parts. Bridesmaids and best men all crawling for your feet. After putting Leovine to rest, you move on through the undead infested dungeon. At this point you have to think, if it wasn't for you, this wouldn't be happening. Avir would still be alive. Leovine would still be a carefree adventurer. Ida wouldn't be on the edge of insanity and Payu wouldn't be having the worst day of his life, which ironically happens to be on a wedding day of all things. If you were still just a normal adventurer, would these innocent people still be enjoying life? Was all this really the repercussion for saving the world? Well before you can think any further, you and your team encounter the spare body, the supposed spare body for Revere, ready for head mounting and all. The one thing I noticed was the size. It seemed to be the size of a huge person, but since the aesthetic was a walking suit, I didn't think much of it and took the thing down with relative annoyance. You finally save Payu, but the duty is not finished. Onward to the bottom pillar where the last thing you faced was a Cthulhu looking mofo. Lo and behold, he became the doorkeep to protect Etta. For some reason though, the demons along the way seemed to be waiting for this ceremony to be started as though they themselves were to be benefited from this. And with the defeat of the doorkeep, we now must take on Etta, but she's not alone. and his severed head was now reborn as a demon, a grotesque abomination of a flying head. The wedding is ready, the cast was set, and the guest of honor was you. Now's your chance to make things right, put down the head of Avir, and bring Etta back to her senses.
Yoda continues her ritual while you and your party take on Avir and put him to rest for good. While fighting, I realized that everything really was my fault. Though it can't be helped if people choose to follow the path of the adventurer. But I can't help but think that if you could have just said something, or maybe encourage Edda to stay home instead, all this nightmare would never exist. One other thing I noticed were the grooms to be. My guess, they were exact replicas of Avir, full body and all. They crawled to Edda as if she was the only thing that mattered, sprawling to be with her and igniting the letters on the floor that spells A B E R E. Avir. Meanwhile, Avir himself is attending to me with familiar attacks I've seen from shadow dragons and flying eyes. Well, you defeat Avir anyway, but as Avir's death shocked Edda for a second time, she falls back, tumbling off the cliff to her doom, and for some odd reason, smiles on the way down. The duty is complete, but the guilt and sadness is still there. Not you or anyone in your party looks at this in any way except sad. Etta went insane to bring her fiancé back. She went out of her way to make sure that the pieces were set. Her old comrades, alive or dead, and you, the hero that Avir looked up to the most. Bring him back so he could fulfill his desire to be more like you. She disturbed the dead with dark necrology and lost her life due to wanting to bring back Avir and finally marry him. All of it seems more like it to be all your fault. But the ending has me even more intrigued. Check this out. Edda is still alive, right? So that means that this will not be the last we see of Edda, the Necromancer. Thank you guys for watching my video. I actually had a fun time getting back into the lures. Of course, if you like the video, do such as that and like the video. And if you'd like to, share this amongst friends and show them that Final Fantasy XIV isn't just another MMO. Of course, if you'd like to see more of my work, hit the subscribe button, for this will not be the end of the lures. And now for the question I have to ask. What next? There are tons of stories to talk about in 14, and they are all interesting in their own way. Remember, there is no quest, scenario, event, or even dungeon that doesn't have a story to them. Tell me which one you wish for me to talk about, and I'll pick from either the most asked for or the most interesting. You have only a few days, so take your pick and leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and have a fantastically fun day.